Good morning. This is going to be one of these centers when we talk about now how we add 3D non-concurrent vectors. But because in all reality it's R cross F, and if we set our coordinate system up correctly, we can just list the individual line or vector and take its starting point as my R and its deltas as my F. You take the sum of R cross F divided by the sum of the forces and you get the radial distance for the moment arm. We're going to show you how you do that in a tool since we get a couple minutes here using a dynamic block. And I'm going to, I made it a second ago, I'm going to make it again. A dynamic block is something that all of you should start playing around with or be aware of, of finding them if not. So we're going to insert the dynamic block here. I have it here, I've made it, it's called a vector block. When I bring it in, Sorry, I, you got to be very careful to say specify on screen. You usually write a little script for this so you don't have to go through this process. You click this here, and now that dynamic block is something that if I grab it, it gets bigger now, or I grab it and it gets smaller. And of course, that dynamic block was based on a unit of one. So typically, if I now go right click properties, there is a piece of data I can report out. That block is, that data is someplace down here. It is the distance. So that is, is the magnitude of the vector. So in the end, when you go through and go through your quick properties, quick prop, or better yet, I guess you do right click options, right click. Right click, oh, that's not going to work. Settings for quick property. But with my options here, there's all kinds of different quick properties you can set. So, that said, here's how you make uh, a dynamic block something as simple as this, and it obviously gets much worse. But B edit, I like to make them first on the plane, but I'm just going to make it vector block. two, hit OK. Go ahead and draft a line for this one from zero comma zero off at a distance of one, zoom so extents, there's your block. You can put arrowheads in things just sometimes just by doing a solid, not a, like a 3D solid, but the old AutoCAD solid, one point, two point, end point, I now have a bad arrow. Probably you could do a better job than that, but you can put different arrows on things. Now you can go about and you're going to add what's called a parameter. And this is going to be a distance, a linear parameter. So you've made all your block, you made all your drafting, and now you're going to change your parameter. A linear parameter from the endpoint here to the endpoint there. That being the distance one, you put it down here. There's your label location. Now you're going to do actions in this case. And in this case, the actions, you're going to see stretch is probably one of the more better things to do in this stuff. So you're going to use a stretch action. You're going to select the parameter. It's going to ask you which one you want to grab with the start point here or the start point there. Because you're doing a stretch, you're going to do S for the second point. And then you're going to grab it a you're going to give it that window that you use in the stretch and then you're going to select your objects. It acts a little different. In this case it's just a multiplier of one. Put your action location. All these things don't really mean anything and you're done. So now when you hit close block editor now when you go into your program and you say I for insert bring up vector block 2, hit OK. You bring it here, you have something then you can, if you notice there I got two poles on that which you do not want. So you could go back and change that. You only wanted one of these things but when you list that later on or when you use your property you see the distance vector is there. And just it's 3.37 Many of you start should start recognizing from the end point there to the end point there. It's the circles. When I say force times orthogonal distance, another way to say that is circle. Now that can become a little bit arduous in 3D, but I'm going to show you you can flip those vectors around in 3D. 
rotate 3D is one way to do it, or 3D rotate. I'm just going to take that object right now. I'm going to take its base point there. All right, that's rotating this way. Now, 3D rotate, rotate 3D. That's the one I wanted. I'm going to grab about the, I'm going to rotate this case, I'm going to rotate about the Y axis. I'm going to rotate it down, which in this case will be a positive 45 degrees. And all of a sudden you see that that is rotated down in 3D. So you can do this for 3D. Now how do you go about doing that? Well in the end you need to carry some information, but in the end if you have your quick properties or your tool tips as you talked about, you can just walk over the top of this and change and write off what you need. Realistically you can do a data extract and pull these things because these are these can be put in as blocks so you can actually pull the information just as easily and so let's see how you would generally do that. I'm going to go ahead and just put a couple more vectors here. I've got my F8. So you can do this with blocks, you can do this with and I'm going to call those all linear vectors. If you remember, I can change them in 3D by going left click, left click. I move around and I say at 0, 0, 0, minus 3. This vector now is a 3D vector. And if I list it, it'll come up as such. I'll do the same thing there. Depending on the direction you drafted it, space bar, space bar, space bar. That's not what you're going to do. You're going to left click, grab it. I move it around a little bit myself so I know I'm stretching it or moving it around. Then I say at 0, 0, 0, minus 5. Now you could have just keyed those in if you think about it. I could have just done a line from here at 4, 4, 6. This is a vector. Now, how is that? How do we finally tie our, tie our UCSs into it? Well, Depending on where this is on my structure, I'm going to go ahead and put a circle structure here. Well, if I want to know its rotation about the center of this circle, I just change my UCS new, and my new CCS is the center of this. Now when I do my lists, it's about these locations and deltas. Deltas, of course, are not going to change until you change your shift and rotation of your coordinate system. So if you're looking here, I'm going to go ahead and change the color on that one so you can see. Again, you start to even do this. Oh my gosh, you change the color on things. Right now, that vector is listed with a start point. And if I list it, and of course, you can turn on the quick properties or your tooltips to do that if you're writing down you see that it's listed with a starting point up there. All of a sudden I can change my UCS new my new UCS is at the end point there and now when I listed this this time the starting point would be 0, 0, 0 so it would have no moment about that point there. You don't want to carry around that circle for your eye. So by doing that on a structure that's in AutoCAD. Realistically, I'll go ahead and do the example here that we had a little bit. Probably had a vector there and a vector there kind of on this that structure that we had a problem for like that and you might have had a vector here. And of course you had that reaction vector here. You can pull off your data twice. You can say UCS, new, the end point there. You can list your vector here, list your vector here, list your vector here. And if in fact you don't want to do basic vector addition, which is all this is, by changing your coordinate system, you can now say UCS new from the endpoint there, and then say list again. And of course these vectors will only be different by this radial vector of 20. So once you do that, you put them in a calculator or a spreadsheet or you know I'm going to really have you kind of avoid the AutoCAD tables to a great degree until you get these links done but 
they're the great they're they're a great way to use the field command and to basically get your 3D and I've done it all in 2D here. It works the same in 3D if you shift your coordinate system. So now you start to see the layering of some of the skill set of using transformations and once again I will point you to your survey book to look for the matrices that are in there. I think it's in the GPS chapter um, but we'll shame here at least that you can kind of we'll start using this dynamic block probably on top of lines because it can be somehow pretty hard to, to manage. Thanks for listening. This is how you add 3D vectors with the tool of AutoCAD.